Hey, what's up everyone? We'll have a look at the latest uh, from Sony. So this is, again, the, the latest PS5 handheld uh, that they'll be releasing soon. And yeah, this is from uh, Adam Savage Tested YouTube channel. So let's take a look at this. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the form factor, the features. I have right here also, of course, uh, the standard. PS5 controller. Hey everybody, totally so we're from Tested here uh, going here hands go. on with some new devices and upcoming devices from the gaming world. Oh, so cool. recently I was invited. So you see right there, yeah, kind of has the same resemblance of the PS5 controller. Same form factor here. Also the joystick, pretty much the same. You, you can just extend it to accommodate your phone over or to Sony PlayStation's Bay Area headquarters to try out a variety of devices. First and foremost, the new yeah, and upcoming cool. PlayStation Old controllers. Oh. Yeah, look at that. It looks, it is exactly the same. It is exactly the same. Left side, exactly the same. Yeah, the color scheme, exactly the same. Um, yeah, the analog sticks, the same. Buttons, the same. Select and start button pretty much the same it just doesn't have this right here forgot what the name of that <laughs> is but it doesn't have it to again accommodate Portal the phone or the tablet uh, this is formerly known as Project playstation Q portal earlier 200 dollars for and that uh, one at first glance uh, looks it's kind a perfect of like, price you know, for that a nintendo switch or a valve steam deck it's a large screen handheld device with the equivalent of uh playstation's fives dual sense controllers on either side uh plugged in slapped on either side nice. of here, an eight looks inch nice man. lcd running uh, 1080p resolution at 60 hertz shit i got i i had a major mistake i had a major mistake you cannot put in a tablet or a phone. The 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 screen is already built into that one. So again, I have no, I have totally no clue what this is all about. It's my first time, so bear with me. Uh, but unlike Nintendo Switch, unlike the Steam Deck, and even unlike you know Logitech's own that looks uh, beautiful. handheld streaming device, uh, this is a device made primarily for PlayStation's remote play feature, which has been around for a while now. Yeah, another remote play it, device. So back with the PS3, I believe, and PS4, and now PS5, you have the ability with a mobile app or even a desktop client yeah. to stream games running locally on your PlayStation. PlayStation. But of course... Again, if you are not yet familiar with how the remote play is, you have to have uh, the all all devices connected in one Wi-Fi network, and you have to turn on or yeah turn on your console for the the remote device to to function. So that's uh yeah that's one thing to that you have to to think about and also you have to have a pretty good internet connection so for some countries like us here <laughs> uh, we have terrible internet connection so it's one thing uh, to watch out for. running the hardware and the compute and the graphics on your playstation over wi-fi and then onto a uh, over 1080p uh, onto 1080p. your phone tablet with let's, a, let's see uh, what Bluetooth the or big differences between controller uh, the and playstation portable and the backbone is overall do it and not only is it a great way of course the backbone you can games, uh, yeah that home you can on uh, couch or put on the computer a phone or a tablet uh, even works uh, when you're outside of the home so as long as you're on a wi-fi connection that's strong enough you can actually just run your ps5 remotely uh, and so the PS Portal, the PlayStation Portal, is a dedicated hardware device to streamline that experience under the PlayStation brand. It's just making it all under okay. uh, a, a, as seamless as possible. You don't need to have any other accessories, screens, tablets, or whatever. And it will be priced at $200. $200. Which I think that's, that's kind of sweet. That is sweet. As a niche device, as something has this one yeah, dedicated device, purpose, though. kind of an accessory to your PS five and that's what i'm bumping that's actually that's perfect uh especially if you have like fam if you are in a family your kids want to watch tv uh you could use the ps 
at the PlayStation Portal to to game uh, anywhere in the house. So pretty useful for that one. If you want to go to the to the uh, comfort room, yeah, you can use that one. So really, uh, really, against. really useful. Uh, but, but I don't know if that that will be really useful if you are like if you're the only one living in your uh, house or yeah, no one uses the TV. You're the only one who uses the TV. I don't know if that will be really that useful. That is that is why it's uh, pretty much uh, a niche device. But the remote play experience on this first and foremost. Uh, very low latency in the experience I had. Couldn't see any visual art, or visual artifacting. Of course, this was a controlled demo That's experience. That's nice. Probably the best case scenario. Uh, they told me the uh, connection on the PlayStation Portal is tri-band. They couldn't confirm whether it was Wi-Fi uh, 5 or 6, but definitely not Wi-Fi 6E. But good enough signal again. All you need yeah, the is screen looks 15 good. megabits per second uh, downstream from there. to make that work. They did say that the remote play experience on the Portal would be better than existing remote play experiences due to the dedicated hardware nature because uh, you don't have any of that input latency when you're connected from Bluetooth over to your tablet, Ooh, then over okay. the uh, over the internet to your dedicated PlayStation. Here, because it's all in one, you press the power button. You can actually wake up your PlayStation Five from sleep nice. mode. That's uh, nice. And you're playing. Going. I have no experience with the the backbone. If if it has that one, but right in, yeah, that's and a mirroring nice feature. essentially that PS Five um, the t big TV experience now onto this eight inch display. And the screen looked good. It's a 1080p screen running at 1080p. 60 hertz with a max 500 hertz. hertz of brightness. And from my experience in this best case scenario, I uh, didn't notice any artifacts of compression coming over that stream. So very low latency in the demos I played. I did Astro's Playroom, it's a little bit of God of War, some Returnal, and it was, it was like the Best case remote play experience I have seen so far. Nice. Uh, weight distribution wise, it didn't feel heavy. Nice. It is a pretty wide device. You know, remind me of how big the you know like the, the, the size of the Steam Deck. Steam Deck, man. Feels heavy pretty, as the Steam, Steam Deck. Pretty big. And because it is wide, because it's using that eight-inch screen, it did feel like the battery was evenly distributed. Didn't I don't know which has like the biggest bigger screen. Is it the Steam Deck or the port, uh, PlayStation Portal? course say uh, how big that battery was physically and he couldn't even confirm the battery life though battery life what is it battery runtime would be comparable to that of the dual sense controller so north um, of five hours five of play time okay. um and that's still the, actually uh, good not the, the steam sense, deck's battery uh, sucks big time man sometimes i only get battery life. yeah even less than um, two hours of, of uh, game time all the on my steam deck trigger and haptic feedback that's why elements that you have i don't play have in the dual sense controller that, that, that there's much no touchpad on it so you use the yeah, touch no touch screen pad. instead of that eight inch screen there's an overlay on the left and right side where you put your thumbs for that feature uh and while it does have button parity the thumbsticks are not the exact same thumbsticks as on not the, the exact sense they're the thumbsticks thumbstick that's on the psvr2 controller so a little what? bit smaller and definitely not as smaller. nice as the one on the edge controller for sure uh there's my well, I can't imagine there. It's actually three point five millimeter headphone jack, smaller, that, uh, some speakers that would be at bad. the top. Um, but what's probably most important is what it doesn't have because it doesn't have Bluetooth on the PlayStation okay, doesn't Portal, have Bluetooth. Um, which means that you can't actually use it as a DualSense controller if you were yeah. sitting in front of your big TV and your PS5. Uh, you could <laughs> theoretically still use remote play and use it as uh, your controller and then someone I else think would that's, have that's deliberate too. <laughs> but then because you'd be running remote play, uh, it wouldn't be, I don't think it's the optimal experience, plus you're then limiting yourself to 1080p on your TV if you have a 4K TV. Um, and perhaps the mo most limiting uh, thing about the PlayStation Portal is it does not have access to the PS Plus's PS Plus what? Premium's cloud streaming service. So if you pay oh. for PS Plus, which is PlayStation's uh, monthly or annual uh, subscription service, it gets you access to a library of games that you can download to your PS5. Uh, at the highest tier, there's also cloud streaming, uh, which you can only do right now locally 
on your PS5. Even with oh. remote play, you cannot stream so from the cloud it to your PS5 and then back it? up over internet to a mobile device. And okay. the PS Portal won't be able to tap oh, into shit. that cloud streaming either, Why? which seems like oh, Why? a funky decision. You know, Why? I, I think it's probably the wrong decision. I know why. I think in the next PlayStation Portal that will be included, so that it will have the "quote unquote" upgrade. <laughs> it's muted. That they could <laughs> unlock in the uh, future, um, but that's just that's yeah, in not the, future. the scope of what they wanted to release right now. Which may version be two, man. Uh, two. may speak to maybe the lack Wait of confidence they have in PS Plus Premium's cloud streaming availability, or the the amount of games, or the fact that they just want people to still be buying. PS5s. They don't want to leave that hardware business entirely. Yeah, yeah. This is not going to replace that experience. Yeah, of course. Um, also, with the lack of Bluetooth, means you're not going to be using Bluetooth headphones, and that leads to the other devices that I got to try on, which were two audio devices. There were the previously. Oh, I think I, I see that one. That's uh, that's the hundred fifty dollar. Uh, earbuds, so wireless earbuds. earbuds, now called the Pulse Explorer, Shit. as well as a new pair of over-the-head headphones. Imagine um, spending their, 150 uh, for that plus the Pulse 3D 200. Headphones, this one called the Pulse. That's already Elite. 350. Pulse Explorer, Pulse Elite. Yeah, Shit. a little bit confusing. All these common terms shared in the gaming space. Wow. Uh, but what's unique about these two audio devices is that they are both planar magnetic headphones. They use planar magnetic drivers, which are a different type of audio technology, larger form factor. Uh, and in the audiophile world, I have planar magnetic headphones I absolutely adore and love. And they're just really great sounding for music, really crisp on the high ends. If you plug this into an amp, you see some really high quality audio okay. experiences. Uh, but that traditionally, sounds good. the entry point for planar magnetic headphones is north of $200, $300, honestly, for like a pair of hi-fi mans that you then also have to plug into an amp. Here, the Pulse Explorers are planar magnetic, and they run off of internal battery that then you can also charge with uh, the Caddy, the case that it comes in, and the Pulse Elites, the over-the-head uh, headphones, over-the-ear headphones, Man, the, uh, the, those are also planar magnetic. The earbuds, though, power they look good. Well. And I got to try that. But $150. Eternal, uh, and the demo sequence, they had set up really accentuated that one looks good, man. raindrops falling onto the ship as you're exploring I have no experience with uh, one caveat how planar with planar headphones, headphones that I've used in the past is the low but end but based on what he is talking about I think it, looks, it sounds amazing of, uh, the bass as you would uh, even with like you know Sony's own XM line of headphones there's also no um an active audio cancellation, noise cancellation. Oh. It's just noise isolation, but it did feel like the noise isolation the on the, uh, the elites were pretty good to the point that I couldn't hear okay, people that's in nice the room as we were filming and I was testing them. Uh, and what's also interesting is that these devices connect to the uh, PS portal uh, and theoretically to your PS5 over a new wireless protocol that they're releasing called PS Link, PlayStation Link. This is a okay. 2.4 gigahertz uh, connection um, that requires, as of right now, for the PS5, a dedicated hardware dongle that will be bundled with another headphones. PS oh, Portal will have it built in, presumably at least all it's PlayStation bundled. devices <laughs> going hardware. I thought they were going, going forward, to go the Apple as well as some uh, third party. Uh, partners that will, uh, will also use PS Link, but the PS5, you need to plug in this USB-A dongle. Uh, but it's supposed to be a more reliable and stronger and more versatile connection than Bluetooth. It's also their proprietary connection, but with a dongle, and they will sell those uh, a la carte as well. You could also plug that into your gaming PC, and you could switch your, okay. your Pulse Explorers between your PS5 and then your portal, and also then walking over to your PC press that button, hold it down, and instantly reconnect, link back up to that device. Uh, the okay. one that got me the most excited was the over-the-head, over-the-ear headphones, the Pulse Elites, because not only okay, that's the two hundred dollar one the entry price board of one hundred fifty dollars, which is pretty good, uh, but that one does have Bluetooth built in and also a three point five millimeter input jack. 
And one of the demos we did, it had it plugged into a PC. Nice, looks and comfortable. Using the PS Link to get the audio from the gaming PC, uh, while the headphones itself was also Bluetooth connected as an audio device for a smartphone. And nice. when I received a phone call or a FaceTime call on that phone, it seamlessly actually combined the audio feeds, uh, so I could have a phone call and then also uh, turn down the audio with the, you wouldn't have to switch between one or the other. It would actually mix that together, uh, which is really neat feature. I, yeah, uh, that also looks good. There's a microphone built in to the headphones as well. You pull them out on the, uh, the Pulse Elites. Uh, and while there's no active noise cancellation on the, the output Again, side, on the input no side, active noise there cancellation. is uh, some AI processing noise, I, It has noise sounds, isolation, uh, I suppose. Sounds or you know, the, the sounds of you eating uh, a bag of chips was a demo they showed. And that actually worked pretty well. Uh, okay, the good, to, good to know. Jack on the Pulse Explorers does do audio pass through, but it does require that the headphones have power. So, unlike you know some headphones where if your battery runs out, you can still get uh, access to the drivers by plugging into a 3.5 millimeter jack. Here, you do need those Pulse uh, Elites to have power in them. Uh, mm, and they really will major. come with a, a hook uh, that you can plug into USB to charge the headphones, as well as a dedicated okay. USB-C port. Uh, and what's nice, nice about that hook is that you can mount it to you know, under your desk or your wall or wherever you have. And Sony did yeah, confirm that, looks, that they will that be looks releasing nice. CAD files for the receiving side of that hook so you can 3D print, design and 3D print your own mounts to use your Pulse Elites anywhere. Cool. So I'm looking forward to trying that out, not only for gaming, but maybe even a new pair of desktop uh, gaming headphones and video editing, editing headphones as well. Nice. Um, so the recap, tried out the PS Portal, two headphones. $200. And that PlayStation Portal, when it comes out later this year. I'm really interested with the PlayStation Portal, man. I'm mean, really curious what the consumer experience is going to yeah, be. Especially for me. I have two kids. My wife watches TV all the time. Kids also watch the TV all the time. So, yeah, probably one of those who need that one. Be like, you know, I can imagine someone going to a Best Buy this holiday season and seeing what looks like a Steam Deck or a Nintendo Switch uh, with the PlayStation logo uh, for $200 and That's not realizing sweet. that on the fine print is that you need a PS5 to use this device. There's nothing that will let you play games on it locally or tap into any other types of services. Yeah, but you need a PlayStation 5 to use it. Um, and so that could be confusing to a lot of consumers and who knows <laughs> what users I can only imagine. Maybe they'll, they'll jailbreak it, uh, and sideload some other people. applications. <laughs> oh, jailbreak. Um, That's bad, though. Don't do uh, that. Okay. Tap into okay. Don't do that. Please support the gaming industry, man. We don't want the gaming industry to die. Uh, again, please no jail do not jailbreak the devices. It Yeah, it would be favorable for us. But actually, in the end, if you jailbreak, no one buys the games anymore then developers again won't ha won't be able to develop really good games because of that so again do not support uh, ps plus premiums cloud streaming I'm not sure right now the scope though of this device for 200 bucks is just playstation Remote I play. think so, 200 you know, bucks is where okay. There was a proper successor it's okay. To the PSP and PS Vita that did do local playing uh, of games. You know, the PS Portal would live comfortably in that family of devices. But where it's in totally the different. PS5 though. generation. It's totally this different. is their only handheld device. Uh, that feels a little weird. It's pretty niche for them to come out with that. Um, so we'll see uh, when that comes out again later this year. Along later with this year, the, nice. Uh, Pulse Explore uh, earbuds, uh, no release. Oh shit, Adam Savage, Starfield Spaceship Model. I'm going to watch that one also, man. I'm excited about that. So anyways, uh, that's it. I hope you enjoy this one. Who's excited about the upcoming uh, PlayStation Portal? Let me know. I'm definitely excited about that. I will be getting one if I can find one in store. And I uh, hope you enjoy this. Like and subscribe. And also subscribe to Adam Savage. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.